have you ever seen an idea from the teacher down the hall in their classroom? Or maybe you see an idea floating around on Instagram or Pinterest or somewhere in the educational world and you just go, like you're mind blown. You're like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? That's so simple, that's genius, right? Well, I'm really excited because in this video today, I'm gonna share with you a mind blown moment that I had when I was a second year teacher and I cannot wait to share it with you. So stick around to find out and let's get started. Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Marcy Bernithi and I am the teacher author behind SaddleUpForSecondGrade.com where I help teachers just like you fall in love with teaching math all over again. And I'm so excited today to share something. Guys, I like really kind of geek out over this kind of stuff and that might be, like people might think that that's weird, but this is probably one of the, I would say like one of the best things I ever did in my classroom as far as like, classroom management goes, as far as structure for how I set up my math block. This is one of the best things I ever did. And you can probably tell like I'm really excited about it right now. And I know that's kind of geeky, but whatever. All right, so I learned this my second year teaching from, um, actually, I had just moved schools and the classroom that I took over had these in their classroom. And I was like, that is so genius. And that is to incorporate math tubs. You might be thinking like, okay, Marcy, what the heck is a math tub? So let me explain. So, but well, before I explain, <laughs> let me um, kind of walk you through why I started using these. What I found was is I was wasting a lot of my instruction time passing out manipulatives and preparing manipulatives or preparing items to use for the next day's lesson. I was either wasting my own time after school preparing them, or I would have students pass out manipulatives at the beginning of the lesson, and we all know how long that takes, right? So whenever I saw the idea for math tubs, I was like, this is genius and it's gonna save me so much time, right? So let me kind of explain what they are. So a math tub is a plastic shoebox size container. Honestly, you guys, I bought mine from Dollar Tree. I don't have the fancy like Sterilite brand ones. I bought mine from Dollar Tree because I wanted them to be affordable. And honestly, as long as you teach your students how to take care of them, my, for the most part, my containers have really held up over the years. I've had to replace a few every now and again but the ones from Dollar Tree have worked perfect for me. So inside my individual math tubs are sets of individualized student manipulatives. So for example, inside they have a 10 frame map. Each student has their own number line. Each student might have a set of linking cubes. So commonly used manipulatives that we use on a regular basis, they have their own individualized set inside plastic baggies inside of their math tub. Now, here's the catch with this. What like really made this a big deal in my classroom is that these are 100% student taken care of. I decided to use this as a learning opportunity to help teach students responsibility. So what I did on the inside of their math tub was I just made a little label of everything that should be inside each student's tub. And then I put how many should be in their tub. So like for example, they need three hundreds blocks, 20 tens blocks, 20 ones blocks, a clock, a set of linking cubes, 20 counters, dice, quarters, dimes, nickels, number cards, whatever it might be. So whatever my commonly used manipulatives for that year were, I would make a list out and then I would put that on the inside of their math tub. <clears throat> this allowed students to see exactly what they needed inside of their tub. So I inherited my own set of math tubs. And what I did was that very first year I actually prepared them myself. It was a little bit time consuming, but it really wasn't that bad. 
I went to the dollar store, like I said. I bought a bunch of um, containers, maybe for ones that were broken, and I just bought a set of Ziploc bags. Then I put commonly used supplies such as money, number cards, dice, a clock, all the things, and I just kind of spread them out in my um, in my classroom. The very beginning of the school year, so during that first week, we introduce our math tubs. Each kid gets their own. You could, on the top, you could just write like student numbers. If you wanted to write their names, you could, but you could just write student numbers, or maybe you don't even want a number. Um, and so each kid was assigned a math tub. And so during that first week of school, we took our math tubs and what we did was I explained to them what the label on their tub meant and then we walked through and I showed them every single manipulative inside their tub and what it was for. We talked about why we have certain numbers, what was the purpose of using them, things like that. What this allowed me is to gain my instructional time back. I wasn't wasting time at the beginning of my math block having students pass out manipulatives. So when our math block came around, I would just say, okay guys, each of you go get your math tub. I kept these, my first year teaching, I just kept these on just like a plastic shelf that I had in my classroom. Um, I just kept them on that shelf. Um, I didn't have numbers assigned or anything like that at the beginning of the year. They were just random. So all kids had to do was go grab a tub off of their shelf take it back to their desk and I would say, okay, today we are working with coins, pull out your bag of coins, and then they would put the lid back on their tub and stick it underneath their desk. When the lesson was over, what I would have them do is they would look at the label on their tub. So say we're looking with coin or we're working with coins. So in their bag, they should have had eight quarters, 20 nickels and 10 pennies and 10 dimes, okay? So with that, I would say, okay, let's look at our label, count how many quarters you have, count how many nickels you have, and so forth. And they were responsible for keeping up with the manipulatives in their individual bag. Once they had double checked, they had the right number in their bag, then they could put it back inside their math tub and they could go put their tub back on the shelf. This was really helpful, especially when it came down to um, small group, whenever I would teach small groups or when students were doing math stations and they needed their own set of individualized manipulatives. I'm not having to prepare that all the time. Kids know they can just go grab their math tub and everything is in one place ready for them to go and they can grab what they need. But here is the best part. You know how I said that these were very student-centered and working on teaching them responsibility, right? So I prepped them that very first year. At the end of the year, what my kids did was they replenished their math tubs for the class the following year. So during, you know, that last week of school when you are cleaning up your classroom and you're basically like just surviving until the last day, right? So what we would do, we would get out our math tubs. Maybe um, we would check for containers that maybe if they needed to be replaced, we would wipe them down. We would wipe off our manipulatives. We, um, and they would restock the bags for next year's class. And each year I did that. So I started using these my, my second year teaching and my students took care of them for the next eight years that I was in the classroom. And I never had to spread everything out and I never had to fully restock them ever again. And again, this was such a time saver. I wasn't wasting time prepping manipulatives after school and I wasn't wasting valuable instruction time. So math tubs, these were my absolute favorite. A common question that I get is, okay, you know, where do you store these? So um, I am going to post a link um, in the description of this video. It's going to take you to a blog post that you can see some picture examples of this as well. But I've done it several different ways because I have had different types of classrooms. So my first year, I just kept the shoebox containers just on a plastic shelf in my classroom. They're just like, you can buy them 
like at Walmart or Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. The next classroom that I was in, I had I had zero storage space. Uh, there wasn't room really to put a shelf. So honestly, what I did was my kids, they kept these on the floor under their desk. And then at the end of the day, we would have to stack our chairs on top of our desk so that the teachers or so that the janitor could vacuum and they would take their mats up and they would just put it on top of their desk. And we just kept it on the floor because I wasn't, I wasn't letting my tubs go. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the third classroom I was in, we had built-in cubbies. And so on their cubby, they had a, um, a little slot underneath where like these fit perfectly. And that's what I used as well. But you can, um, like I said, you can number these. So if your students are assigned a number, student number one gets tub number one. Student number two gets tub number two and so forth. Or you can just leave them blank and kids, whenever they need a math tub, they can just go grab and pull one. But math tubs, this is like my claim to anything like mind blowing. Um, but this was one of the best things I ever, ever did for my math block, for classroom management, and so many things. So you're probably wondering, okay, like where can I get this label? So you can actually get the math tub label and you can get the label that I have for what's inside and I also have a blank editable version so that you can type on here and you can create your own set of manipulatives that your students need on a regular basis and um, you can get this this is a free download on my website so I'm actually going to put the link in the description. So you are going to want to head on over to that blog post. And that is where you can find the free download. All you need to do is enter your name and your email address, and it will be sent straight to your inbox. So if you decide to use Math Tubs in your classroom, I would love for you to leave me a comment. Let me know how they go. And I cannot wait to see you guys in the next video.